If you have watched our video Genes and Flies, you will know that an extraordinary discovery about the mechanisms of inheritance was accomplished by studying the common fruit fly, Drosophila. You may be interested to know that you can actually replicate this Nobel Prize winning experiment at home. I'll outline the basic procedure in this video. If you haven't done so already, take a few minutes and watch our first video on this topic, Genes and Flies. It contains some important background information. Basically, the experiment you will undertake involves mating white-eyed and red-eyed fruit flies and observing the eye color of their offspring. You will need some fruit flies. Leave some fruit laying around or check your backyard composter and you will find fruit flies. Unfortunately, you need two pure strains of fruit flies, pure white-eyed and wild-type or red-eyed flies. It is unlikely you will find white-eyed flies on your decaying banana. These two special strains of flies, red-eyed and white-eyed, can be purchased from many science supply stores. My flies arrived by courier within a few days of ordering. These purchased red-eyed flies are called wild-type. They carry the gene for red eyes on both X chromosomes. The flies are packaged in vials with food and a mesh lattice. Before we start, let's look at the life cycle of Drosophila. The life of this tiny fly begins as an egg. The egg hatches into a small larva. The larva grows rapidly. As you can see, they are voracious foragers. The media they are eating is colored blue, making it easier to see the larva. About eight days after hatching, the larvae move out of the media and find a place to pupate. The pupa is the final stage before an adult fly emerges. You can clearly see the stages in this vial. Various sized larvae are visible on the walls of the container. Pupae are attached to the mesh. Typically, this process, egg to adult, takes 10 to 14 days. Temperature is a factor. This short life cycle makes Drosophila ideal for studying inheritance. The fly population will grow rapidly. To avoid crowding, you will want to divide them into fresh culture tubes, although many other types of container will do. Make sure fresh air can enter the container and the flies can't escape. Cotton or a fine mesh cloth are commonly used to seal the containers. You will need to prepare some food. This commercial media is mixed with an equal volume of water. After mixing, let it stand for an hour. Once the moisture is fully absorbed, the flies won't get wet. You can prepare your own Drosophila media. Something as simple as banana mixed with yeast will work. Search the internet and you'll find a number of different recipes. Once the tubes are prepared, transfer some flies. I do this by placing the parent colony in the refrigerator or on some ice. This temporarily immobilizes the flies. Check the flies every five minutes. Once all activity is stopped, remove the flies from the fridge. Don't leave them chilling for any longer than necessary. Acting quickly, transfer flies into the new tubes. Keep the tubes on their side so the flies don't stick to the wet media. I'm using a vented fabric to cover the tubes. The caps fit loosely, allowing air exchange. As the flies warm up, they return to normal activity. Label the tubes with date and fly type. It is a good idea to use different rooms to perform this transfer. Flies can escape during this transfer, and the experiment would be ruined if a red-eyed fly, unnoticed, entered a white-eyed culture. For the next step in this investigation, we have to learn how to distinguish male from female flies. They do have some observable differences. Generally, female flies are larger than males, particularly if they are swollen with aches. The last body segments on the male fly are black. In the female, the body segments are discernible. 
Male flies also have a small black comb on their front legs. Under a hand lens, this appears as a black mark. But under a microscope, the comb is clearly visible. The female fly does not have this structure. This experiment we are replicating was first done in 1910 by research scientist T.H. Morgan. He made it a white-eyed male fly with a red-eyed female. The results were surprising. We need a male white-eyed fly and a virgin female red-eyed fly. The male fly is easy to find, but we need to isolate a female fly before she has a chance to mate. Here's one way of accomplishing that. When preparing new Drosophila colonies, I placed a plastic straw in each tube. About a week after starting the colonies, larvae climb the straws and pupate. The cultures look like this 10 days after being established. Larvae clearly visible and the first pupae have appeared at the top of the straw. Once pupae are visible, I remove the straw and cut it into lengths, each length containing a single pupa. I place each pupa in a separate tube. When the flies hatch, we can determine if we have a male or female fly. If we have a female fly, she has been isolated and not had a chance to mate. A virgin red-eyed fly. Using refrigeration, we can isolate a male white-eyed fly and introduce him to our unmated red-eyed fly. The next step here is to study the first generation of this mating and record their sex and eye color. When the first pupae appear, remove the parents to avoid mating with the emerging generation. Then one week after the first adult flies appear, remove and freeze all the adult flies. Removing the flies a week after the first pupae appear ensure that no second generation flies have matured. You should have lots of flies. These flies are the first generation from the white-eyed male, red-eyed female cross. With a small brush and hand lens, sort the flies by eye color and sex. If your results are the same as Morgan's, all the flies have red eyes. The white-eyed trait seems to have disappeared. Or has it? The next step in this investigation requires mating flies from this first generation. I will leave you to design that experiment. The results are surprising and reveal a link between eye color and sex. Discovering a link between sex chromosomes and heredity was a turning point in genetics research. T.H. Morgan was awarded a Nobel Prize for this discovery. The fruit fly, Drosophila, continues to play an important role in genetics labs around the world. University fly labs have developed sophisticated equipment and procedures designed for working with Drosophila. If you research the techniques used by professional labs, you will find some ideas for improving your own investigation. We have more science-related videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.